uh, in a gas turbine, you have fuel burning and you can reach temperatures as high as anywhere between 600 to 2,200, 1,300 degrees Celsius. So, so, the, so when, when that happens, you can have um, uh, thermal cracking issues, you can have carbon soot forming, which means that you have to spend money on maintenance. The other problem is a gas turbine is sensitive to the ambient condition. So when you're at mean sea level, the air is more denser. So, it, so, so you've got, uh, it, it's more denser. So when the density is more, it becomes easier to, you don't have to, so the, the turbine does not have to struggle to deliver uh, 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 more output. But let's say you're in a hot country, the air temperature goes up because the gas temperature is hot, naturally the power output decreases. Let's say you raise the, you took the gas turbine and installed it in some place which is uh, well above mean sea level, uh, much, uh, on a much higher, um, this thing, let's say, um, 200 uh, meters above mean sea level in, in some part of the world. So as you keep going higher and higher, the air becomes thin. That is the air density keeps reducing. So again, the power output decreases. So there are certain disadvantages with, with gas turbines. The positives are when you've got no other resource, you can use the, uh, the, 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 the natural gas from the wells itself to run the gas turbine. The disadvantages are maintenance, emissions, and uh, power output because of ambient condition. Now, when these uh, uh, gas turbines were invented for aero applications for the airline industry, so it was for military applications first, and then move to the airline industry. Because we are taking out the, 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 the fan in front of it and hooking it onto a gas compressor, you are deriving these, these, in, these land and marine turbines. So, the, the, so, so the, 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 the turbines that you see in process facilities are were derived from turbines that were made for aero application. So that's why we say aero derivative turbines. They were derived from the aviation industry. Now, aero derivative turbines are smaller. They fit snugly into a platform. Yeah, so because of because on a platform you have space constraints. If you try to increase the footprint of the platform, naturally the structure weight will increase, more cement, more metal, you, you've got to put a lot of money into it. So you need something which is smaller and still packs a punch, giving you the power rating that you need. So aeroderivative turbines can be used in offshore facilities. Now aeroderivative der turbines can also come in in a twin shaft design. So you can have a single shaft or a twin shaft. A single shaft makes more sense for power generation. So if you want 50 Hertz power, the generator must run at 50 her uh, at, at a certain speed to generate 50 Hertz, which means that the gas turbine connected to the generator also has to rotate at that speed. But uh, in, a, in the case of a gas compressor, when the feed flow rate keeps changing, it keeps fluctuating up and down, then the compressor speed or the compressor speed also has to be altered accordingly. So that is where a twin shaft design helps you out. So, uh, a twin shaft design helps you out. So aeroderivative turbines are more for offshore applications and uh, you can also use them on uh, for onshore applications as well. But for onshore applications also, there's a family of, of turbines, what we call them land and marine. So GE offers something like LM, they call it LM, uh, I think 6,000, LM 6,000 is an example. I think it gives about 55 or 56 uh, megawatts of, uh, uh, power ISO rating, I think, but I have to check. I'm not sure with these numbers, but I have to check. It's just an example. The third option that you've got is electric motors. The advantage with electric motors, you don't have to bother about steam or natural gas. You just need electricity. The layout is simple. You don't have, uh, like a gas turbine, you don't have to worry about lube oil leaking. I mean, the amount of lube oil that you need, uh, lube oil and uh, sealing with, with dry gas seals, you don't have those problems with electric motors. All it needs is power. The advantage with electric motors over the other two kinds of uh, drivers is that you've got very high efficiencies. You can hit as high as 98% efficiency. Now, the motors that you get are 3000 or 3600. That is, you can have a two, four, six, or an eight pole motor, and you have 50 Hertz and 60 Hertz current. So the formula is simple, 120 into F by P. So 120, so let's say it's 50 Hertz and uh, four pole motor, so 120 into 50 by four uh, comes to 120 into 50 by four uh, comes to 3000 RPM. Let's say it is uh, uh, because US is the only country which uses uh, 60 Hertz. 
So 120 into 60 by four gives you 3,600 RPM. So, so but, but does this mean that the gas compressor can run only at 3,000 RPM? No, you can run it at higher speeds by using a gearbox. So if, it is a, so if you say, so let's say you have a gas compressor running at 6,000 RPM, but your motor is running at 3,000 RPM, you place a gear, uh, a gearbox there with a gear ratio of two is to one. So 3,000 to 6,000 RPM. But let's say I have to keep varying the speed. Sometimes it drops to 5,500 or sometimes it goes to 6,500 or 5,238 RPM. If you want to vary the speed, then what you can do is use a variable frequency drive, which is basically a, a piece of electronic circuit, circuitry that you fit it to an induction motor. So when you alter the frequency of the current, so does the amount of uh, frequency of the current, uh, so does the amount of um, current flowing into the motor also changes, which in turn alters the speed of the motor. Now you can have in earlier years, there used to be limitations. I mean, in terms of constructions, you can have only about 10 or 15 megawatts, but now you can hit as high as 75 megawatts. So Freeport LNG is a project somewhere in the US where they've used a 75 megawatt electric motor to drive the, uh, to, 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 to drive the, I think it's the mixed refrigerant uh, gas compressor. It's, it's in an LNG facility, either it is for the mixed refrigerant or the propane compressors, I'm not sure. But in Freeport LNG, it's a liquefaction plant where they use electric motors. So I just put one example here. So to summarize this slide, <coughs> the, the way you choose a driver for a project depends on the compression capacity, the configuration plant location, the fuel requirements, and the flexibility of operation. Compressor capacity, which means that let's say the, 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 for gas turbines, uh, the best I know is uh, an MS9001, uh, by GE General Electric, we say frame nine, and I think the ISO rating is about 130 megawatts, uh, if I remember well. Um, but let's say you have a, a situation where you need 200 megawatts of power, you can use a steam turbine. If it is 300 megawatts, definitely you'll have to use a steam turbine. So, dip, so the so first point is compressor. The compression capacity decides is one of the point which de decides the driver selection. That is depending on how much power you need, you have to choose your driver. Second, compressor configuration. Do you have two compressors in series where both the compressors are driven by one motor with a common shaft running through both of them? Or you can have, uh, um, you can have uh, compressors in series or you can even have compressors in parallel. If, if the capacity is, 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 is if so if I decide to put an electric motor and if it is within the capacity, yes, we can put that. And the next thing is plant location. If you want to, to choose a driver, you have to also uh, look into the source of uh, the fuel to it. So if it is a power plant, the fuel is elect electricity. If it is a steam turbine, you need water. If it is a gas turbine, you can take the natural gas and burn it. Then fuel or power requirements. Sometimes what happens is that when you shut down a gas turbine and you try to you ramp, ramp up the speed, the problem is that you need you need a hum because it's in a state of inertia, and if you want to bring it to life again, what you've got to do is you have to you have to it's like, it's like uh, when you're lifting the dumbbells, you know, the first time when you bend over and pull the dumbbells, you have to make that oomph noise and you have to just lift it. That initial amount of energy you have to put. So what happens is if the fuel's calorific value is not that high, then what we do is we can use hydrogen to start a gas turbine. And once it reaches the rated speed, we switch over. Once you cross the threshold, the peak power before it reaches the steady state power, what you can do is you can use a higher calorific value fuel such as hydrogen and then switch over to natural gas. And then flexibility of operation. If you want um, a, a variation in the speed, you have to go for a variable speed drive. You can, you can have a gearbox by you to, to increase the speed, but it is still a fixed speed or you can use a variable speed drive to, 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 to alter the speed. In case of a gas turbine, it's a, with a twin shaft design, it's easier, it's a, it, you can alter the, the aid because, it, because uh, even in the case of a gas turbine with twin shaft designs, you can have variable speed drives. So the summary is the, is the, these, the five factors, these are the five factors that affect driver selection, capacity, configuration, the location of the plant, fuel, 
um, uh, requirements and flexibility of operation. Next. Oh, I haven't raised any. <laughs> Let me just clean this up. Sir, uh, in case if I'm behind schedule, give me a wa warning. <laughs> <coughs> oh, wait. Yeah. So the third one is, the next section is to understand what are the key elements of, of a centrifugal compressor, uh, of a compression system. So I'm just using a single state machine, the, the simplest of the whole lot to understand. No matter what, it doesn't matter what configuration you work later on, but this is the same to everything. So a gas compression system will have, the key elements are you have two suction block, you have a suction block valve and a discharge block valve to isolate the system. You'll have a suction scrubber to, to, to separate out the liquids um, and any particulate matter from the incoming gas. You can use a wire mesh or a vein scrubber depending on what is the allowable droplet size. And then of course the gas compressor itself to raise the pressure of the, uh, of the, of the incoming gas. The, uh, the driver can be motor, gas turbine or steam turbine. In this case, I'm, just, I'm going to explain with uh, uh, taking the case of an electric motor uh, for this. You have a gas compressor. When you compress a gas, the temperature rises. So you have to have an air cooler here at the discharge. And then, um, and then you, you need to have a check valve, but before that, you have to have a line which recycles the gas from the discharge back to the suction. But why? So when to, to understand